It's an overwhelming aroma. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have one of the, well, the extremely good whiskies here in my cask. It's the Glendronach, 21 years old, 46%, no, 48% ABV, unchill filtered, uncolored and really old and matured in uh, old Oloroso sherry casks as well as Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Well, the price has risen quite a lot over the last two years to, I think in the moment it's, it's close to 120 um, in Central Europe, Euros. And uh, well, this bottle, the 21 years old, uh, has the name, take, uh, carries the name Parliament. 21 years, Parliament. And uh, what does that mean? It's for the House of Lords or House of Commons? No, the Parliament is, uh, well, Parliament is a colony of birds. It's also called a Parliament and uh, around the distillery, which is uh, in a small hollow, and around this distillery, there are some very old and dark black trees. And in those trees, there are old crows and the trees are standing there for 200 years and the crows, well, they stay there not for 200 years, but, but the colony still resides there and they are uh, they're talking <laughs> like a parliament. Yeah, chatty people. Um, this bottle was introduced into the market in 2012 and uh, it was then the bottle with the oldest age, the highest age in Glendronach, which is uh, bottled constantly. There had been older ones, the Grandeur, and I took an awful lot of videos of Glendronach bottles already, and the 15-year-old, which is a wonderful, intense one, the 18-year-old, wonderfully smooth, and uh, the Grandeur with the 24 years of age, and the 12 years old, which is reasonably priced, a really good one. <clears throat> And then this 21 years old, and it's, well, it's getting rare now. Uh, they sold a lot of them because they started <laughs> quite cheap with that bottle. Yeah. Um, this bottle or this distillery um, was founded by James Allardyce, well, a colorful person. Um, he lived from or he, he bought the distillery, or I think he started or bought, bought. Uh, the distillery started uh, operations in 1826 and he bought it around the 1840s and he died in the 1860s, late 1860s, I think. And he was one of the very first uh, doing direct marketing, direct sales. So he sold the whiskey into Aberdeen, into the bars, and it was said that uh, he, he sold it to the red light district. Mm. People know what's good. And uh, well, this was printed on, on old bottles of Glendronach, but the new ones, uh, well, this story uh, vanished. So it's a colorful person today on the label. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, James Allardyce, is told to be the first one doing finishes. So changing the casks during maturation. If he is really the first or was one of the first, I don't know. And here it says 1780 to 1849. Inventor, pioneer, entrepreneur, founder of the Glendronach Distillery. So he founded it, yes. <laughs> Allardyce was a colorful character and stories uh, abound as to how he promoted his whiskey with entrepreneurial flair. <laughs> yeah. He was also a pioneer of wood finishing and would have celebrated today's superb Glendronach, of course, matured in a combination of the finest Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry cask. The Glendronach is a perfectly balanced, smooth, creamy, full-bodied, single malt Scotch whiskey. Oh everything non-chill filtered natural color 
That's how we like it. And Billy Walker, the master distiller of Glendonach, he did the tasting notes. So this is no marketing blur, this is reality. Uh, I had the opportunity to talk to him during the Keepers of the Quash uh, spring meeting in Black Castle in 2016. We sat on his table, yeah. Appearance, deep amber with a sherry wood sheen. And the sherry is written with a CH, so it's the fruit, the sherry fruit, not the S-H-E, the sherry of the uh, Spanish wine, no. A sherry wood sheen. Uh, really, there's a light, light uh, red one in it, and we lately cut a sherry tree in our garden, and was old and <clears throat> foully, and this showed this dark red one as well. A delicate mix of ripe autumnal fruit, notably blackberries and red plums, rich oloroso sherry and candied orange segments. Spite oatmeal biscuits and toasted oak fragrances bring excellent weight and balance. Palette resolute flavors of fine oloroso sherry and bitter chocolate sauce. Um, bitter chocolate, that's the old maturation in European oak casks. This tends to bring this bitter chocolate which has been spread liberally over homemade plum pudding. This is all infused with fabulous spicy notes, cinnamon, allspice and nutmeg, full bodied with smooth tannins. <clears throat> Finish long and lingering. Ha <laughs> ha. I had that already and I have it as one of my really favorites. It's on my short list, really. <clears throat> So what would you expect to be a good whiskey? An old one, sherry cask finished, a higher ABV, uncolored, until filtered. It's all in here. This is from the, the paper. It's the best of the best, sir. It's an overwhelming aroma. So this is no smoke. A, sh a strong sherry and definite alcoholic note. Yes. So it's 48%. It's well above 46, which is typically well mixed in. So this one would uh, be able to carry some water. <sighs> I expect it to be that one, a sweeter one. But you can't tell uh, um, the percentage between Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez Sherry. The Pedro Jimenez Sherry is the very sweet one and the Oloroso is the fruity one. And <clears throat> so this one is more Oloroso than Pedro Jimenez. Dark fruit, ripe fruit, sultanas, <sighs> candied oranges, <laughs> but <laughs> no oat cakes, no. Oat biscuits, he said. No, the, the maltiness, the cereal note is well covered behind all this fruitiness and, and the alcohol note. And the, the oakiness, of course. Yeah. Hmm. It's so wonderful. It's so strong, intense, and covering your mouth, and it's mouth watering and bringing over some dryness, spiciness, of course, a lot, nuttiness, all, all sorts of nuts. The cinnamon is missing. Plum butter. And there's this, this allspice. It's also called, uh, in former times, clove pepper. And some, some nutmeg. So there's a lot of different spiciness in it. You can take a bath in this one. Not recommended, no. <laughs> also not an inner bath, no, not too much. It's 
It's a very long aftertaste and this chocolate taste stays on. Whenever you're able to get your fingers on such a bottle, just it's a buy, definite buy. How does it compare to the 15 years old and the 18 years old? Well, the 15 years old is the more intense one, the 18 years old is the smoother one, and this one combines both of them. So it's intense from the spiciness, smooth from the all aromas around, and it shows definitely uh, more depth more sherry, more of everything. Oh, so this one is a, a gem, a real masterpiece. Yeah, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and I will have this small miniature this night. Uh, I can't resist, it's really a good one. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and uh, please share your thoughts about this whiskey in our whiskey database where you can give your ratings to, the, to this whiskey as well as your verbal comments to this one.